in any event, uh, my name is Richard Carlton. I'm the CEO of the Canadian Securities Exchange. For those of you who aren't familiar uh, with the CSC, uh, it's my pleasure to do a quick introduction this morning, but more importantly, to talk about some of the trends that we see in the public capital markets, particularly in the clean tech and the energy metal space uh, over the last uh, 12 months. There we go. So the free time uh, political broadcast is basically, from the Canadian Securities Exchange perspective, our goal is to deliver the lowest cost of public capital, principally for early stage public companies in the Canadian market. Now I could go on and on about uh, what the competitive advantage is for the Canadian Securities Exchange, or working with the Canadian Securities Exchange, but fundamentally we can boil it down to one thing. We too are entrepreneurs. The exchange started, was launched in 2003. By 2004, we had uh, three listings. Today, we have uh, 327 or 328, and uh, we are successfully growing the exchange at a tremendously fast clip. But as I said, the important thing is that when we are working with junior companies from all over the world, literally, we've been there. We understand the cost pressures that you're on, the time pressures that you're under, and the dreams and hopes that you're trying to uh, make reality uh, with the company that you're trying to bring into the public market. We've been there. We walked that road, and we understand what you're going through. So here's an encouraging uh, trend, news you can use perhaps, but uh, year-to-date basis, we've listed 22 new companies. Twelve of them have been from the mining space. And although the market cap uh, is still significantly less than uh, uh, the other uh, companies that have uh, come on to us this year, as I say, in terms of the numbers and the activity of uh, companies that are being uh, funded over the last, and really it's the last six to eight weeks, most of the activity is taking place in the mining sector. Again, technology and in large measure clean tech is uh, taking in the vast majority of the money that's being raised. But again, the mining sector, which was virtually dead at this time last year, has come back uh, with, uh, uh, with a vengeance. As I mentioned, in the last year, we've had 66 new companies join the exchange. Here's a sample of the energy metal companies that are uh, listed uh, uh, on the exchange. And these companies represent uh, projects that uh, are really in virtually every jurisdiction in the world. Um, companies come to Canada to access the public markets, but they might be listed in uh, jurisdictions uh, uh, in, in, in other parts of the world, in, in Asia and Europe. But Canada represents an excellent opportunity to access not just the local capital market, but the North American capital market together. So companies that are listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange qualify under Reg S and the SEC rules and the new Jobs Act to raise money uh, in prospectus exempt financings uh, from investors in the United States. We also encourage companies uh, that are taking advantage of U.S. capital raising opportunities to uh, consider a quotation on the OTC markets in the United States so that your investors in the U.S. have a U.S. dollar quote. The market maker then sews the border together between the Canadian dollar market represented on us and the U.S. dollar market that's represented on the OTC markets. That arbitrage actually con uh, contributes considerably to the uh, quality and the depth of the book that we see on both sides of the border. In point of fact, uh, Mr. Trump has kind of already built that wall. It's very hard for U.S. investors to get orders into the Canadian market directly. So as I say, we, say we, we, we recommend that folks jump the wall and actually get a quotation on one of the regulated markets in the United States. From a clean tech perspective, we're also well represented and have a number of uh, names with, uh, again, operations in various parts of the world. We launched an index uh, just more than a year ago, and uh, like all small cap indices, uh, it uh, took a real hit uh, upon launch. We, we, we should have waited about six months or thereabouts, but uh, in any event, the uh, index is now holding steady and has been for the last uh, several months. Uh, at this point, again, 
The market caps are primarily uh, tilted towards the uh, technology, uh, what we euphemistically refer to as the diversified industry space, and that actually means marijuana. Um, and uh, the, uh, but we expect to see the miners uh, starting to uh, show up again as the uh, prices uh, increase and as we see larger and more mature projects uh, list on the exchange. Here's a fun chart. We all like to draw, uh, and, I, and I apologize to the Australians in the audience, um, uh, we, we call them hockey sticks uh, here, uh, ice hockey sticks, I guess you'd uh, think of them as. But uh, this is our uh, progress in terms of the number of listings. Uh, I mentioned we began in 2003, and uh, that is 328. There you go. But as you can see, over the last couple of years, uh, the progress uh, has uh, uh, accelerated quite dramatically. That line's getting steeper and steeper uh, in terms of the number of new companies that are listing with us. And actually, my favorite chart uh, is uh, this one. And this is uh, trading turnover. And uh, basically, as you can see, in the spring of uh, 2014, uh, there was a, an enormous increase uh, in the amount of uh, uh, share volume traded through the facilities of the Canadian Securities Exchange. Um, that one, uh, again, euphemistically was referred to as the pot.com uh, circumstance, where a number of uh, companies that were involved in the medical marijuana industry in Canada selected the Canadian Securities Exchange as their uh, venue of choice, and we saw a tremendous amount of investor interest uh, in the space. The, as you can see, we've now actually gotten back into record territory in terms of share turnover in the last month. That is entirely driven by the miners, um, and it's uh, gold exploration companies, <coughs> excuse me, as, uh, as well as uh, uh, the uranium companies and a number of other uh, miners that are driving the, uh, uh, driving the increase in turnover that we've seen. And uh, you know, we see this as sustainable and uh, not, uh, again, to paraphrase from the last panel, uh, not a ceiling, but in fact a floor uh, for further increases in uh, share turnover. I managed to get through all the remarks in, uh, uh, in, in almost record time. But um, in any event, as I, I like to focus, I guess, uh, a couple of things on the, on the opportunities for international cross-listing. Um, I know that we have a number of, uh, of public companies uh, from different jurisdictions around the world uh, represented uh, here today. And, uh, you know, it's certainly our observation from past business cycles that there can be advantages to having a public listing in, in Canada. Um, our recommendation, of course, would be to establish a firm base of Canadian shareholders at the same time. So a company that Canadian listing uh, with uh, a fundraise domestically and uh, build that, as I say, build that group of uh, shareholders uh, locally. We also encourage uh, companies that are coming onto the exchange for the first time to uh, identify a local market maker. So we actually have a market making program where we assign uh, particular stocks of responsibility to dealers. And it's their responsibility to ensure that the spread uh, is uh, reasonable at all times with uh, broader regard to the marketplace uh, and that they are present to ensure that there is a reasonably well representative uh, bid and offer at all times for every stock that uh, they are responsible for. Um, the company should have a good working relationship with the market maker uh, so that, you know, without obviously breaching any uh, securities laws, uh, that the market maker is aware of uh, what's going on with the company. They have a reasonable idea of where the stock is, who the potential buyers of the stock are, and an understanding of the overall dynamics in the company. Uh, we find that uh, a successful relationship uh, with, between the issuer and the uh, listed company uh, does result in a better liquidity profile uh, for the company listed on us. The also, it's important that that market maker have uh, relationships with the other places around the world where the stock trades. So we have a number of companies that uh, are either quoted or listed on the Deutsche Börse, that uh, are quoted on the OTC markets in the United States, and uh, may be uh, quoted or traded on other markets uh, around the world. As I say, it's critically important, and the market maker can provide that, you know, that arbitrage uh, trading uh, that ensures that the market that's uh, uh, present in Canada and present internationally is reflective of the overall buy-sell dynamics in the particular name. Um, we encourage, as I say, our companies to do that because we find that the broader the shareholder base, the more people around the world that are looking at the stock, that are buying and selling the stock, again, 
the better the quality of the market is. The tighter the spreads, the greater the share turnover, and the, the deeper the books.